Hey guys, so I'm really excited about this, but okay, first of all, I'm going to uh, be talking about the episodes in She Wolf of London. It's this show that went from 1990 to 1991, and I remember watching high school and just, I mean, I was just such a big fan, and I uh, got like the DVD, like, well, not DVD, but like the whole collection. So yeah, if you've seen this movie, just comment down below and like we can talk about it, just nerd out to that and like the episodes you like the best. So I'm going to be going in chronological order, which is oh, the first one called Chulf of London. Now this is going to be, be like kind of um, quick. It's going to be, so it's going to have spoilers in it. Um, So yeah, get right into it. It's about this American grad student named Randy Wallace, who is a couple years older than me, you know, she's a grad student. I think she's like 25, 26. Anyways, you don't really know why exactly she goes to London, other than the fact that she wants to study with Professor Ian Matheson. She thinks he's going to be like this really old dude, this stuffy academic type star, you know, just stereotypical in movies sometimes. But he turns out to be this pretty good-looking guy in his early 40s. And she immediately just, yeah, just, you can tell that she's really into him. Um, at the beginning, she's a vegetarian. This is important to remember um, throughout the episode. A lot of important things. She's vegetarian. She's a little shy and awkward. However, she has, like, hiked in Yosemite before and has like a Sierra membership so I mean she's on an awkward Yuki side but at the same time she's got like this strength um to her so yep that happened she after the class she tells them that like she's having trouble with residency requirements he uh, is like oh yeah there's this B&B that my parents run i mean i love it if you stayed there i mean they love it too and she's like yeah i'll do that it's a clean meet and the rest of the family the dad is kind of just grumpy all the time and just gets on um julian which is ian's uh twin brother's uh son apparently they don't really explain the details of this but he uh, Ian's brother for some reason end up in jail and like I said they never really explain it they never really bring it up except for first maybe one or two episodes they mention it anyways yeah and then the mom's like more on the sweet side kind of just pampering around a little bit and Elsa is kind of I mean she cracks appropriate jokes and stuff now always gets in trouble with Ian's dad, and then Julian is a high schooler who, interesting enough, his actor was about 30 years old when he played Julian. Interesting, huh? A 30 year old playing like a 15 or 16 year old. I mean, yeah. So, yep, there's that. She tells him that she wants to like debunk the whole supernatural thing, like spirits. So, she decides to go out on the moors. Um, during a full moon, mind you. And not long after, she gets attacked. And, like, her face just gets clawed open. She somehow, miraculously, survives. Ends up in the hospital. Just, I mean, it's a clean cut. Just needs stitches. But I find it interesting is that it seemed like a pretty kind of deep cut, although it healed in less than a month. Just, I don't know if that's the case, if it just healed normally like a wound would. However, it, I mean, it healed pretty quickly. Um, so my interpretation is that it just healed faster than normal. And I also noticed that she gets a craving for meats whenever, like, Ian brings up the classic English breakfast, like just meat, a uh, jam, all that good stuff. She she's a piece of meat and decides to eat it. Basically, 
a few days later, she studies really late at the university, realizes, oh man, it's, yeah, time to get back and go to bed. Um, so she goes exploring on a campus. Maybe she gets lost or something. I don't know. She goes downstairs, goes and like enters an animal lab with monkeys and dogs. And I feel so bad for the monkeys, especially. It's like, man, there's kept in like crammed little cages. And she just, yeah, sees this huge great dame. And yeah, that's when she transforms. And I think it's really cool that like just a setting like in a just animal lab, this university. I really, I really like that sort of unique vibe um, to it. It's one of the, I think it's one of the best like world transformations in the series. Anyways, she uh, transforms. Ian uh, like, keeps on hearing like the animals go ape shit. He um, goes to check it out. Randy or werewolf Randy just chases him all the way down to the hallway. And yeah, he uh, gets in the closet, closes the door. Just like the claw, her claw just like bursts through the fucking door and like almost grabs him, but then just retreats and yeah, runs off. And hear a sound of, like something breaking, like maybe pipes. Um, the next morning, uh, like the detectives wondering why are there pieces of Randy's clothing and animal lab? Where are the animals? Stuff like that. Anyways, turns out Randy is in the shower an immense shower um and she wakes up gets splinters under her nails and yeah basically and then then like these these three guys come in and she tells them her name and basically randy means horny in um london or england i guess so they have a kick with that and basically yeah, one of the guys gives her a towel um from his waist so yeah basically she somehow makes it back to just Ian's, I think his office. He wants her to go back to the States because he doesn't, you know, he thinks she's just having this reaction to it. Um, just for logical, logical, excuse me, logical explanation, like she's just traumatized by what happened and he thinks it'd be best to come back. She's in, <clears throat> Excuse me. She somehow convinces him to help her, like, find a cure. They try, like, going to the site where she got mauled, hypnosis, which I think is really interesting. Um, because whenever he tries to get her to remember what happened, she just, like, starts squirming and just starts screaming and stuff. And, I mean, I just found that kind of interesting, like, in a sense, since maybe... Like it's kind of it's kind of blocked off where she's feeling like what she felt on that night, and she can't like think any like coherent thoughts as her then that. Anyways, yeah, and they well Randy steps on this ring um belonging to one of the like belonging to like one of the gypsies. They go to this gypsy camp, see this lady, and she's like. Yeah, monsters don't exist, but then she, Brandy shows her the ring. She freaks out because it's her grandson. So the grandson is the one who bit Randy. Long story short, basically, you know, give chase to the guy. Um, he falls, he drives off a cliff, and then Ian sees, like, for some reason he transforms, like, the, like, the werewolf who bit Randy. Like, for some reason he just... Um, transforms in the car. I don't, I don't know why it's probably late, but well, maybe because he saw Randy and that triggers something. Anyways, yeah, and basically, like, this happens in the span of like you know a month later. She has to be like chained up in Ian's basement and stuff, and he decides to put out the paper and find out like if anyone knows anything about it. And yeah, that is just a quick, just description of it. On Friday, I will be talking about the Bogman of Lechmore Heath. I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. And I will see y'all in a couple of days. All right. Waiting for it to hit the 10-minute mark.
because why not? There we go. Okay, bye guys.